Hello there, my fellow Disney fan, and welcome to Disney Travel Secrets. We are your host, Robin Carey Stewart, and we are in our studio in beautiful Windermere, Florida. This is show number 386. That's a lot of shows. Original air date, July 8th, 2024. And we have a packed show for you today because we have some updates, some tips, and we're going to talk a little bit about the new Lightning Lane program. I know you're all looking forward to that, and a very special announcement we have some dates for our next weekends on the wish cruises on an amazing ship and while we are in the middle of summer we thought now would be the perfect time to kind of refresh ourselves on the water parks at disney and it's back but with a twist a new are you serious hello my friends this is former disney imagineer hugh darley and you're listening to disney travel secrets with my friends rob and carrie stewart as you can imagine i have plenty of disney secrets myself and I can't wait to share them with you. Let's get this show on the road. Take it away, guys. We hope you enjoyed the 4th of July week or weekend. Maybe you celebrated the previous, you know, the weekend before. We don't know if we had a good time on July 4th yet because we're recording this on July 3rd. <laughs> but if you are part of our super fans, then you are catching this a little bit early because we're releasing these uh, a little bit in advance because of our YouTube channel. That's if Rads gets it done. So That's true. No video, promises. Our, our video producer. <laughs> yeah. And I know for a lot of you, it was an extra long weekend because it did fall on a Thursday. And so it's like you can pack in a few more vacation days without really leaving any vacation days on the table. And in fact, we have worked up a strategy to help you maximize your days in 2025 and capture a little bit more time off, but utilize when the holidays fall, like this past one where it was on the 4th, which is a Thursday. So make sure that you are following us over at Travel Inspired. Exactly. We, we started thinking about this because there are so many Monday holidays. There's You've got the Thanksgiving always. I just learned Thanksgiving's always on a Thursday. <laughs> it is always <laughs> on a Thursday. <laughs> but you can, there's a strategy to where, depending on if you have like maybe 10, maybe 12 um, vacation days or paid time off, however you guys want to use that, we're going to have some really fun strategies on how to maximize it without having to take too much time off all at once. Yeah. So that's the Travel Inspired Podcast. So this week, we have a few shout outs. So we're going to start with who? Well, this one is a very special shout out to some longtime listeners. So thank you so much to Kristen, Neil, Garrett, and Jack for tuning in every week. I hope the show doesn't put you to sleep, Jack. That's an inside story. Never mind. <laughs> so also a funny story. We've always said that the main reason we moved up here two years ago was so we could be closer to Walt Disney World. So it was really a quick thing. We can hop over uh, to see our clients and our agents. Uh, we're actually going to do this today after we record. We're meeting a couple of our agents um, over by Epcot. And this is something we did about about 10 days ago. Yeah, it was about 10 days ago. We hopped over to Contemporary to meet two of our new agents. That was Logan and Matt. And then also one of our longtime agents who has been with us for almost six years happened to be in town. So the five of us all met up and it was super fun. So if you've been to the Contemporary and you've walked back over by by Steakhouse 71, we took the uh, the escalator up and they have some seating areas out there. And we sat down, you know, with, with the three of them. And there was someone who was walking over by the escalator to go up to the next one. And he stopped and he kind of waved and kind of like, hi. I'm like, he goes, hey, you're Rob from Disney Travel Secrets. I'm like, well, yes, I am. And he introduced himself. And uh, his name is Gary. And then he was going to introduce us right away to his wife, Sherry, but she'd stayed on the escalator. So <laughs> it was pretty she, funny. <laughs> she had to get to the top and come back down. Yeah. But one of the things that I really loved was, you know, he said, I really enjoy your show because you guys tell it like it is. And thank you for saying that because we really appreciate it. And of course, we had to get a, a picture with him and his wife. So for those of you watching us on YouTube, Here's that shot. <laughs> and we also realized on the last show when I was like previewing it that sometimes we will mention something we may have on our desk or something behind us. And we didn't really do a good description. But <laughs> <laughs> if you were on YouTube, you got to see it. It was the Tiana plush. It's a little firefly. It's really cute. I don't even really. It's plastic. I don't know why they call it a plush. It's yeah, not but very plush. I forget. The majority of you, though, are listening to audio only. So we will definitely do a better job on that. It's also a great reason to follow Disney Travel Secrets over on YouTube. because We are putting all of our shows up there. Everybody, except those of you driving, don't do this now. But head over. 
and you know check out our page please subscribe and you'll get you know make sure you set up the alerts and things like that because every time we drop an episode you'll get to see the video version yeah you can binge us over there you too. can binge us <laughs> <laughs> exciting news we have our dates for weekend on the wish it will be one that we are doing later this year and we do plan on doing at least three of them in 2025 i like that but to end 2024 we have picked a great date because we're timing this out if you want to come and do kind of a combo of a cruise over the weekend it leaves on friday gets back monday morning and then maybe hit some of the holiday parties over at Disney World. Great option. So it is November 8th, and you can go to weekendsonthewish.com, fill out the form, and one of our team members will get you get in touch with you and get you all set up. That's a brand new website name, Weekends on the Wish. Yeah, I like it. It's a good one. It's a good one. And now for a very, very special announcement, the CMV Heroes Project has just partnered with an amazing charity, and that charity is Folds of Honor. I mean, what and what a great time to announce this. We kind of started this officially. The press release is July 4th. I thought that was uh, an appropriate day, but the press release itself is coming out the day this airs. Yeah, so this is a nonprofit organization. It's a charity, so it is a 501c3, and they provide educational scholarships to the spouses and children of military members who have fallen or been disabled while serving in the United States Armed Forces. An amazing organization. And here is how we are going to help them for every agent that joins us specifically from this project, which is active duty or retired military or their spouses, we're gonna make a donation to Folds of Honor. And then for each vacation that these new agents book, Disney or otherwise, we do a lot of different things. Yes, we, we will do. also donate a portion of our commissions back to Folds of Honor. And a third way is we're going to produce some co-branded gear, you know, hats and t-shirts, and all of the profit from those sales will go also to Folds of Honor. Yeah, I'm super excited. The logo's looking really good. I know. We're so hopefully our, it'll be totally done by the time the show comes out. We're kind but, of on our third rendition for that. Yeah, I even heard you talking to one of our agents, Matt and Tiffany, mm -hmm. and he is retired military. And in fact, he is like also a big golf person and he yes, had a great he idea. Mm -hmm. He was saying we should also do a golf tournament next year at Disney to benefit Folds of Honor. I had known he was retired military. I didn't know that he has three brothers that are still active duty and his father was a big wig. I'm not going to say which division, but he's he was very, very high up. And we were training our agents and we were mentioning the CMV Heroes Project. Right after training, he calls me, Rob, we got to talk. And so I think we're going to try to do a CMV Heroes Project Folds of Honor charity golf tournament at Disney probably next, maybe May-ish, but we have plenty of time to plan for that. Yeah, so if you do get our emails every week, as soon as that is ready to announce, you will be one of the first people to find out about it. Yes. So if you yourself are going to Disney and you have a trip on the books, or maybe you're just kind of looking and saying, hey, we're thinking about it. You're probably listening because one, you're a Disney fan and you also are trying to figure out how to get ready for your vacation and specifically some of the crazy things around the Genie Plus changes in Lightning Lane that will be happening here shortly. And if you aren't familiar, this is basically, it's a paid add-on. Please make sure you hear this word, optional. It's not mandatory, but it's to help you avoid standing in the long lines. We did something over in, in France. We were there, um, Disneyland Paris, and we paid, I think it was 160 euro per person, different system. But when it comes to something like this, it's all about what you or you think your time is worth. So love it or hate it, it's important to know what it is and decide if you're going to use it on your next trip. So we are not going to be going into all of the ins and no. outs of this program on the show. And why? Because we like to try things out and nobody's used this system yet. But people are complaining about it already. They're which already I think complaining. Is awesome. Yeah. And it's, you know, and it's really not fair to, you know, think that some people are going to say, okay, here's how you're going to use this system because it is going to be different by the time it comes out for many reasons. And they have decided to roll this out on a very special day. It is Carrie's birthday. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> In a nutshell, the old fast pass system is pretty much coming back. You will be paying for it. Uh, the good news is you can make advanced plans and guests staying on site get to pick earlier than those staying off site. Yeah. And I like that because it's another benefit for staying at a Disney resort. And when it is busy, this system is a hundred percent going to make a difference. Right now, the only thing you need to know is it starts officially on Carrie's birthday palooza, July 24th. <laughs> We have no idea what the pricing is going to be. They have not leaked that because that would probably blow up the internet, good and bad. So 
just stay tuned. Yeah. And it was, you know, there were lots of blogs and vlogs and TikToks and reels and that, logs. And, yeah, that were all like coming people out. Clogs. Some people coming out with like their guides of which ones you, you know, like which rides you should get from each park and which lightning lanes. And, you know, I only mentioned that to caution you a little bit because since the old fast pass system was in play, a lot of new attractions have come out which kind of make those selections for the tier one, tier two, very different. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. We will get you, by the time we test this, we will get you up to speed. And then also a lot of those guides don't take into account what your family wants to do. Not everybody wants to go on the same rides, believe it or not. Really, I mean, the best thing you can do is do your prep, pick your top three in each park, um, and then kind of work your plan from there. Don't let some random, and I will, I'm not going to use air quotes because we outlawed those, but don't <laughs> some random experts online and give you advice. They don't know you or your family. Yeah, this is so, so true. And in fact, we see a lot of times, even like news programs or special programs that are not produced by people who know Disney, they're always doing something crazy. I know, like, like that one we were watching, uh, How Disney Built America. Yep. And Adam Richman is one of the hosts. Why he's on there. He was the guy... Um, Man versus yeah, food. Yeah, he was man versus food. That's how I know him. <laughs> now he's on some contract where he's on basically every show that we see. Pretty much. And he, he was talking about, you know, they were building um, specifically about talking when they built Contemporary and how Roy ended up firing, um, I might think it was US Steel that was doing everything, or their contractors, and started their own construction company, which of course is commonplace now. Everybody knows Disney builds their own stuff. But he said the name of the construction company was Buena Vista. Like um, the Terminator, hasta la vista, baby. No, no, it's Buena Vista. And it just goes to show that these people are so-called experts, but they're just reading a teleprompter. This is so true. Which brings us to a very special, are you serious, Carrie edition. Yes, I have been raving about this for the past like couple weeks because what frustrates me the most are sometimes things happen and people put out things that I'm like, are you serious? Why did they do that? And we've discussed this many times in the past. And I often will get targeted ads, believe it or not. No, and, no. you know, they'll pop up in my feed saying, oh, you like Disney. Well, you need to know about this Disney guide. They're giving their best tips. Seriously, be very careful about some of the advice that you get in on some of these guides. And I wouldn't waste my money on some. There was one recently that came out where one of the tips was just take an Uber from your hotel if you're staying outside to Contemporary so that you can walk over to Magic Kingdom. Worst advice ever, and you can't do that. They will turn you away, and you need to get dropped off at Ticket and Transportation Center. If that was the case, everybody would do that. They would take an Uber from down the street just to be able to park, get out, you know, have the Uber driver park and let you out. If you are not staying in there, they'll say, listen, turn around, <clears throat> and go to ticket and transportation. And then some of you are going to try to jump out of the Uber as they make the U-turn. Yeah. They will. Don't, don't, don't do that. But then don't, also. Don't get banned. If you're watching somebody's video and they are mispronouncing the name of some rides, I don't know if I would trust them for advice. And also, it's great if they go to Disney once a year and they come down. That's fantastic. They probably do no more than the average person. I just caution you, though, don't fall for some of those traps. There's so much free information that is accurate. There's a lot of really great, there's podcasts, there's great vlogs, and even Disney site in general has a lot. But here's the biggest thing. Disney is always changing, like always. One of the big things in the past couple of weeks has been storybook treats over in Magic Kingdom, which used to be a great place to go for that spicy chicken waffle and then the Nutella it be gone. It's only treats now. <laughs> it is. And so a lot of times if you have one of those, like we used to buy the burn bomb books and they're fantastic, but they get outdated so, so fast. I think fast. I have one on the bookshelf over there. I knew. You probably do. And I think it's dated uh, 2017. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, you know, I'm working on my book just at magic. It's going to be more, it's going to be relevant, but it's not going to be so specific that I'd have to write a new edition every year. You know, uh, hats off to Burns Bomb, Burn Bomb. If you don't have one, they have. It's probably the most detailed book, but you don't need to buy one every year. Yeah, and there are some things that are very evergreen when it comes to planning your Disney vacation. The online guidebooks, though, in my opinion, are probably just going to stress you out more than anything because they're trying to overplan your days. So 
Don't let that be you. Bottom line, work with a travel professional when in doubt. It's why we do this podcast to help you navigate all the changes and also discover new things to do at Disney. And again, to reiterate, we're at the parks all the time. By the time you're listening to this, we're probably at the park. We we just don't know. Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, speaking of... Next year, there is a new thing that if you do have a Disney vacation planned or you want to plan one, this could be a fun extra perk for you to take advantage of. And then also, if you're still coming down, it's also something you may want to consider adding on to your ticket package because it's hot here. And that is the water parks. And next year, specifically, if you have a Disney plan, which is a resort ticket and package, then you get your on the day you check in, you can go to one of the water parks for free. That's included. Super cool. And a lot of people coming down here either forget or don't remember that they have water parks. Um, But it's a great perk. This is a a great reason to get here on your check-in day as early as you can and go enjoy the parks, the water parks for free. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know that Disney has two water parks, not just one. And they are open year round. There are some times during the year where one will be open and one will be closed, but you at least have one water park year round that you can enjoy. So the two parks are Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach. And of course, being Disney, they have some really fun stories. And I think it's more fun to know the stories before you go to the water parks, because then when you get there, you're like, oh, that's why we have that. So over at Typhoon Lagoon, this the story behind this is that Typhoon Lagoon was this pristine tropical paradise. And the story goes that the area was struck by an enormous typhoon and it just it ruined everything. So not no longer pristine and so there were the storm had the powerful winds the waves tossed ships there's surfboards went flying fishing gear was strewn all over the island and it just became a mess the other park is blizzard beach and again it's set in florida and here's the story it was like a news alert a freak snowstorm hit the area blanketing the region in snow and ice this unusual occurrence in sunny florida prompted local entrepreneurs to capitalize on the situation. Seeing an opportunity, these entrepreneurs quickly constructed Florida's first ski resort, complete with ski lifts, toboggan runs, and slalom courses. But then it's Florida, so it thawed. And that's what created the water park. And so it's just, it's a fun story, but that's why when you go to these parks, you go to Typhoon Lagoon and you see the ship that's like up on like one of the mountains in the hills and you're like, what's it doing up there? That is why it got tossed around. You'll see surfboards randomly strewn throughout. And then over at Blizzard Beach, it is kind of cute. You go over there and they have ski lifts and it's just, it's a little bit different, but the stories are fun. It really goes back to how Disney uses theming to tell specific stories and how much thought and forethought they put into all these little details that most people wouldn't even think to do. And there are other water parks where you just go and you, you know, Here's the lazy river. Here's this. But Mm -hmm. for Disney to put a story behind everything is pretty cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Now, both parks are pretty similar in size. Blizzard Beach is technically 10 acres bigger, but Typhoon, for size perspective, is about half the size of Magic Kingdom. That still is pretty big. It's like 56 acres, which also means you could still spend a full day there and you'll have plenty to do. One of the reasons that usually one park is open and not the other is there's really not a demand enough or enough demand to fill two water parks and also obviously double staffing. But of course, each park does have a lazy river. Yeah. So if people are like, oh, I really wanted this one to be open, but this one is, don't worry, because they're very similar. They do each have some features, though, that are unique to them. So over at Typhoon Lagoon, the star of that one is the wave pool. And in fact, it makes big enough waves that they have surf lessons that you can sign up for. And yes. usually those are in the summertime, but that's kind of cool. They have that wave that comes and that is a huge difference between the two parks is Typhoon Lagoon is the one with the wave pool. Another ride over there is Miss Adventure Falls. Not Miss Adventure, but Miss adventure. It, that one's really fun though. And it's, it's a, actually a one of the, raft ride. Yep. Yeah. And it's one of the longest rides in a water park over at Disney, which is super, super fun. And there's, it even has a couple auto, audio, auto animatronics. Yeah, I know I was having the, a hard time saying things. that. Yes. It has those things. <laughs> and then one of the ones that is one of my personal favorites over there is the crush and gusher. That one's just super fun. They have different routes so you can go on different ones. And it's one of those that It's more of a thrill ride, but it's also fun to go on. Real ride, yes. Over at Blizzard Beach, you have Summit Plummet. This This one's crazy. It's one of the tallest and fastest free fall body slides in the world with the vertical drop of almost 120 feet. 
and speeds up to 60 miles per hour. That I have is no desire to that do is that one. Cray cray. Yeah, that one's crazy. And then they have Team Boat Springs. See uh, what they did there? No, I used to have a condo at Team Boat Springs, Colorado. So yeah, yeah, so there you go. But this is one of those big family rafts. And so six of you can get into one of those rafts and it just kind of, you know, twists and turns and goes down. It's a classic. I think that one's really great. You've also got the Slush Gusher. They really lo they love these tongue twisters. Um, high speed body slide features two hills that give riders a sensation of weightlessness. It's also considered a good stepping stone before trying the Summit Plummet. Yeah, if you don't like the slush gusher, you're not gonna like Summit Plummet. <laughs> that is true. That is so. <laughs> say, but, that, say that three times really fast. Yeah, good luck. Both water parks though are great for all ages. And so when you put them up against each other, it's not like one is designed for just young families and one's for more teens and adventurous people. They're both very, very similar. If you do have little ones, don't worry, they do have life jackets available. Yeah, and of course the lifeguards- they're free. Yeah, they are free. Mm -hmm. And the lifeguards are there like, all over the place. Disney does it better than I think any other location. Now, when it comes to amenities, we get this question asked a lot. Yes, there are towels there that you can pick up. So you don't need to worry about bringing your own beach towels. Do not bring a towel from your resort hotel. You do not need to do that. They also have lockers. And so you can use the lockers there and you can even bring in a cooler with your own meals, your lunch, your sodas, your water, pretty much you can bring in anything except for alcoholic beverages. Which is what most people would want to bring anyway. So they-, they No, people they, like <laughs> to pack their lunch. <laughs> but there are uh, bars and restaurants for the adults to enjoy as well. Yeah. And if you want to really plus it up, highly recommend that you go ahead and rent a cabana for the day. These are going to range in price depending upon the size of the cabana, which water park you're at, and the time of year. But they're going to run about 225 to 450 per day plus tax, but totally worth it, especially if you have a group of people because it gives you a good home base. Absolutely, and we have not tried this yet, but we are going to put that on our list for sure. I just know we'll be looking for the 225 price over the four. Well, there's just price. two of us, <laughs> but it does come with things like you have a shaded area, you have your own secure storage there, so you don't need to worry about going back to your locker. There's towel service, there's a small fridge, and they do stock it with bottled water. They have charging stations in there, which, you know, we're all on our cell phones all the time for photos and stuff. And then they also have somebody who will come to your cabana and take food and drink orders if you want to order some food off of the menu. Here's our pro tip. If you do want to get one of these cabanas, they don't have that many of them. Do this as early as possible right now. It is 60 days out. And go ahead and splurge on the cabana knowing that you got into the water park for free. And so if you're thinking about Going to the water park, here's kind of our pro tip. Yes, for next year, you do get that free day on your check-in. But if you love water parks, what I love about the Disney package is if you add that water and sports option onto your ticket, whether it's a one park per day ticket or it is a park hopper, if you have a four-day ticket, you can visit the water park four times. So in the summer months, I think that is a great add-on where you can go and enjoy that water park and maybe do that in the morning take a little afternoon break when it's going to start pouring rain and then go out in the evening. So you can get a lot of bang for your buck and it's not that much more. As usual, you are correct. The other thing is don't think you're going to check in at like, I'll get to, I'll get to my resort on check-in day at five o'clock and then head over to the water parks. They are not open at night unless it is a special ticketed event, which would have an extra cost. Yeah. So Put that on your list. Consider going to the water park. I know we haven't been enough and we did add it onto our annual passes because it was only $100 extra. For and the whole year. For the whole year. And a one day park ticket though, if you did it just separate, is usually going to run around $75. So if you're thinking of adding it, if you just went even like maybe two times, sometimes even just once, you're going to get your money. One and a half times. Yeah, one and a half you go times. half a time. <laughs> Thanks again for listening or for those of you watching us on our YouTube channel. We know you guys have a choice of where you, you get your Disney information, and we appreciate you spending your time with us. And if we can help you plan your next Disney vacation and maybe even dig a little bit deeper in the if the water parks are right for you and your family, or if you need some extra help understanding those lightning lane things that are coming down, make sure you reach out to us or one of our Creating Magic Vacations travel advisors. And you can just head on over to the link that is in the description or creatingmagicvacations.com. Until next time. Have a magical day. We hope to see you real soon.